Hey everybody, hey Cardware here, and in this video we are going to go over how to get Pi-hole installed using the Proxmox helper scripts. As always, be cautious when you're writing scripts from the internet. Make sure you review the source code and know exactly what it's doing before you execute it on your system. That being said, let's jump into the installation. So we're going to open up the Proxmox helper scripts page. And we have the command all the way down here at the bottom. So we're just going to copy that. Go over to Proxmox. Make sure you're in the server view and select your server. And then I always pop out a shell. And then we will just control shift V paste in the command here and begin the installation. So uh, this will create a new pie hole LXC. That's what we want. So click yes. And I usually do no. And then you can do default settings. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm actually going to do advanced settings so that I can set a static IP address. I do recommend doing a static IP address, whether you do it at the router or uh, directly in the LXC itself. And then, so we'll just do Debian. I'm going to keep most of the defaults. We'll do Berkworm on privilege container. We'll set the root password. I'm going to leave it as container ID 100, pie hole for the host name, disk size is fine, CPU, RAM, bridge is all good. But instead of DHCP, we're going to do static, and I'm going to do 192.168.50.3. So Proxmox is on 50.2, as you can see here, and we're going to do it on 50.3. This is just my preference for you. You can leave it as DHCP, go into your router and set it as a static IP address. Or if you know specifically the IP, you can set a static IP here. You just have to end in slash 24. And then for gateway, I'm going to do 192.168.50.1. Again, you can either just have done the default settings, and this is pretty much going to be done automatically. Or if you want to set a specific gateway and a specific IP for your pie hole, you can do it this way. I don't need anything for app catcher. I'm going to actually disable IPv6. Leave that blank. Leave it blank. Leave it blank. 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 And OK. And I'm going to leave no for enable uh, SSH, root SSH access, because I can always root into it from Proxmox. And I'm going to not enable verbo verbose mode. And yes, let's create. So it's going to go through all the different steps here and get the new LXC created. And this does take a little bit of time to get everything set up, but it is an LXC, so it's pretty quick. We can see network connected. I'm currently on the correct IP address. It was able to reach out to get github.com. And once this finishes up and PyHole is installed, what we're going to need to do is make sure we set our router to use it as the DNS. Now, some tutorials and some guides you might see say add a backup DNS. My personal advice is to just use Pi-hole as your DNS, and then if it ever goes down, which literally I, I've never had Pi-hole go down, then you know it's down because no website will resolve, and you can either fix it or go in and put like. Google or Cloudflare or whatever DNS you want to use. And the reason I was told for this is because if you have two, um, I'm not going to install Onbound. That will probably be a different video. Uh, but the reason I was told is that there's no guarantee that it doesn't just use the backup. It's not like a failover. It's just it has two options to resolve uh, domains. So if you have two, you might sometimes bypass Pile, and I don't want that. OK, so we can get into our Pi-hole interface. Let's just copy that, paste that in there, and Pi-hole is good to go. You can also, I think, do, I think, maybe you can just do pi.hole or HTTP. Yeah, but I think this is actually not the same one. I think that's for my other instance, but anyways. Pi-hole's up, and before this, so right now it's it's active. We have a DNS now, but it's not being used by this network. So I'm going to open up 
the browser here and I'm in, I have, so every router is going to be a little bit different. I have a Unify Dream Machine and for each of my networks that I've created, each of the VLANs, I can set a DNS server. So right now it's set to auto, which means it's going to use the, whatever is above that. So the internet has a network as well set up and it's going to use the one that I have set up there. And that's my main production pie holes being used there. But if I have a more specific DNS server set, so within my network, if a VLAN is set to a specific DNS server, then it will respect that for that VLAN. So I'm going to put in 192.168.50.3, and I'm not going to put in any backups. So we'll click Apply Changes. And then we're going to go back to our system here. And now it should actually start reflecting. So I don't know if we can go to like google.com. This should still load. Uh, I'm not seeing any queries yet, so might take a second for everything to start working. But one thing we can do uh, while we're waiting is go into our settings here and we can do web interface. You can change up the themes. So I typically like deep midnight, save and apply that. I think it just looks a little bit better. And then there's also the advanced section here. One thing to note, um, if you're gonna be accessing like across VLANs, your PyHole instance, you might need to change some settings. Uh, nope, not there. Mm. Um, so allow only local requests. If for some reason, if you're on like a different VLAN and you can't access your pie hole, you might have to bind it only to the interface or permit all origins. Granted, be careful because devices is directly connected to the internet, like a cloud instance, you might have some issues with security. So just make sure you're doing the right stuff when it comes to this section here. And let's see, we're not really getting any requests here, but one, one way that you can actually test it out is by going to local DNS records. And right now we've got iHole. So if we put uh, the address here and I just do pihole.internal, let's just add that uh, one way typically that this will work is I can just now try iHole.internal um, slash admin and there we go. So just put in my password here and now what's interesting is that's actually my production pile instance so uh, I think I actually did did mess with that, and I do have that set up. So I think it's still... Let me try doing a quick reboot. Give it a second here, and we'll just see if maybe it takes a second for the DNS server to get updated. I think Windows, there's a way you can just force the DNS server to get refreshed, but I think without a reboot, it's not going to re-query which DNS server it should be using, and it's going to be using probably my production pie hole. So let's just give that a second to figure itself out and see if maybe I just need a restart. Uh, if anybody knows if there's a command within Windows to like refresh your um, like IP address and DNS server, that could be helpful. But this is really quick to get back in. So, okay, let's actually check the network, see if we're actually using. Okay, so yes, so now it is showing our pie hole instance here as the DNS server. So if I do pihole.internal slash admin. I always forget the slash admin. Now we are using our actual, this one is my actual test.
test one that we just set up. So you can see the qu total queries are much less. It is starting to get queried now. Windows is kind of crazy. Uh, it just like it has constant activity. So it's kind of a pain, but that's it. Uh, there's some other things you can do. So if we go to like wiki and we go to Proxmox and we go to PyHole and we do additional lists, um, there are like some additional lists that you can add. So there's all these different uh, suspicious lists, advertising lists, tracking and telemetry, malicious. Uh, there's just a bunch of different lists here that you can add inside PyHole. So up here under lists, you can add new lists. And it's a good idea to do like one at a time because you can add so many that like your internet just becomes useless because you're blocking like everything. And I've noticed like if I Google something and there's an ad and I click the ad, it doesn't load because it's been blocked by uh, the just the default list. So keep that in mind. I use just use the default list right now and I might change it, but for the most part, that's working pretty well for me. But that is how you get PyHole set up and uh, added to your router. It took me a little bit of time to get everything working. So just it sometimes it takes a little bit before things click and sometimes you just need to reboot your computer and that'll refresh the DNS uh, server that it's using. Uh, but other than that, you should have everything working. Uh, a good next step after PyHole is to install Nginx Proxy Manager. And what that's going to allow you to do uh, eventually, if you then do the Nginx Proxy Manager <clears throat> SSL, is when you go to certain websites like Proxmox, you get that like there's no, there's like a self signed certificate. You can actually have a certificate from Let's Encrypt using Cloudflare. That way you don't get those messages and you're actually have like a, a legit certificate. So those are probably the next two steps that you can do from there. And then that way you can actually do like proxmox.internal or something instead of having to type in the IP address to proxmox. So you can actually use real domains, which means if the IP ever does change, it's really easy. You can just update it in Nginx Proxy Manager and you're good to go. So that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful and PyHole is one of my favorite services. I highly recommend it and I will see you in the next video.